Hello students, welcome to this series on marketing and retail business. Today we are going to study retail management. In this we will cover unit 2. We will study hypermarket and supermarket. Now let's study the objective of this lecture. The objective is to cover the advantages of hypermarket and supermarket and to study the opportunities and the future available with this market. Let's study what is a hypermarket. Hypermarket is a combination of a supermarket plus departmental store. It is an expensive facility carrying a wide range of products under one roof including full grocery lines and general merchandise. So hypermarket consists of a combination of two stores that is you have a departmental store also there and a supermarket also there which has a very large facility of the groceries and general merchandises available for day to day life. The concept of hypermarket. The term hypermarket was coined in 1968 by Jack was picked it. The hypermarket focus on high volume and low margin sales. They generally have more than 2 lakh different brands of merchandise available at any one time. It is a suburban and a standout out of town locations. Now see hypermarket has become a new way of doing business where you have a large location more than 2 lakhs brands available under one roof and the positioning and the kind of the culture which is available over here is to give a treat to the customers of low margins because when you are doing sourcing at a very large scale that is you are directly shipping the goods from different origins that is from cheap locations and sources you have a competitive advantage and pass this advantage to the customer. The customer is attracted because he can go there once can fill up his monthly requirements and come back. So this is an easy way because lot of promotion is there and uh, lot of items which are available that is you have promotional incentives of getting uh, items in packages is also available over here. Success, the economic leverage that hypermarkets chain can impose upon the suppliers. It is the hypermarkets they are generally situated in the shopping centers outside the cities. They are surrounded by extensive car parking facilities and generally other specialized superstores that sell clothing, sports gear, automobile items and other brands etc. Now the success of these stores is first they have got very large space that is good ambience, good parking facilities. When customers see the products they remember what they need and when you get things in packages obviously the customers get attracted and it is in suburban locations that is you travel to these locations you buy your goods according to your needs and get your products at a viable price. In Japan hypermarkets may be found in urban areas as well as less populated areas. The Japanese government encourages hypermarket installations as mutual investment by financial stocks they are a common way to run hypermarkets. Now they have become a way of life because lot of investment which is coming over here is forcing uh, government's promotion also and investors attraction also because the kind of the packages and the deals which they can offer is not in the viable position of other may, even online stores can not give you online options of cheap uh, promotions which they have. So hypermarkets have become popular with many economies and they are doing well in many markets. The hypermarkets may contain restaurants, internet cafes, departmental store merchandise, full range of groceries, beauty saloons, other services inside the sta same store. So the store can be one but every facility related to your life may be office, a real estate organization, it is a spa, it is kind of the grocery, the food chain, the food store, the retail uh, restaurant, everything is available under one roof. So this basically attracts customers with different needs, they collect over here, they can uh, uh, engage with these facilities and make their life comfortable. Future Hypermarket business model may be under threat from online shopping and the shift towards customization. But the online market is emerging in a big way as hypermarkets also have a challenge of this. 
The hyper markets have emerged in a big way, have developed in many economies, but still they are facing the challenges of online store. Let us see how we will manage these things. The famous stores or hypermarkets which are available all over the world include the Bangalore Central Pantaloon, the Mart, the Suffolk, the Star Bazaar, the Easy Day, the Reliance Fresh, the Spencer's, Treveni Supermarket. So, these are the famous stores which are in India, but globally also you have Walmart and other hypermarkets which are doing good business and good kind of customer services all over the world. Now, let us study the supermarket. A supermarket is a large form of traditional grocery store. This is a self service shop offering a wide variety of food and household products organized in asiles. That is what is a supermarket? You go to supermarket, you have seen the display of the product groceries, you pick up the groceries in a basket and do your billing. You have a self service to pick and to choose. It is smaller and more limited in range of merchandising than a hypermarket or a big market. It is larger and has a wider selection than a traditional grocery store. See, supermarket is smaller than a hypermarket. The hypermarket may contain a supermarket and other things also, but it is bigger than a grocery store. If you go to supermarket, you get, get a high range and a larger variety of products at lower price than a grocery store because when the stock is more, obviously the sourcing can be cheap. What are the elements sold in a supermarket? It is meat, fresh produce and dairy, baked goods and canned and packaged goods, non-food items such as kitchenware, household cleaners, pharmacy products and pet supplies, medicines, clothes, DVDs, sporting equipment, board games and seasonal items. So, what is sold in supermarket is um, basically a collection of goods which support your life. These supermarkets have an advantage that is they give you prices which are reasonable, they give you facilities under one roof, the customer has the advantage of observing and a um, easy sense of touching the products. So, when you become comfortable product with the product then only you can buy. Now, let us study the traditional supermarket. The traditional supermarket occupies large amount of floor space usually on a single level. It is situated near a residential area in order to be convenient to the customers. Now, the cost of supermarket goes high because the real estate cost is very high and now because the attractive locations are already occupied by big investors or by traditionally people who were sitting in those locations. It is very difficult for new entrants to enter those locations because maybe even if you have money, but the place is not there. So, the USP of a supermarket is that it is very convenient to the customers. It is basically situated in locations which are highly populated by the customers. The has and buzz of the customers everyday life because they are crossing those markets forces them to enter those markets because they are the pulse and the part of their lifestyle. They are so convenient and so near to their life that they cannot ignore them. What is the basic appeal? It is the availability of a broad selection of goods under a single roof at relatively low prices. The supermarket offers goods and services which are fresh, which are easy to be uh, taken away are offered. The daily bread, the butter, the food items. You definitely cannot go to the online shop uh, shopping stores and order your daily needs. Your daily needs related to your vegetables, the fruits, the milk, which needs a supply base of every day. That is, these goods are perishable and even one day late would give you a kind of a smell or expiry date. So, we need fresh baked goods which directly come out with from bakery and give you a fresh breakfast. So, they are a part of your daily life and they are available at convenient locations. So, every day customer needs to go in the morning to buy these three basic needs of the breakfast that is you need milk, grocery and other items related to support your day to day working. What are the advantages of supermarkets? It basically allocates large budget to advertising typically through newspapers. It is of ease of parking, 
elaborate display of goods, convenient shopping hours and maybe even 24 hours a day. Different supermarkets work according to the different locations. If the locations are busy, they work for 24 hours because like near railway stations or near bus stands, near food restaurants, hotels or near offices, these stores work round the clock because they get customers who are working round the clock and they are accessing these facilities at every hour of the day. That is they need tea, they need milk, they need uh, easy availability of items related to their daily life. So the parking, the convenient location attracts the customers through these supermarkets. Supermarkets are a part of corporate chains. Supermarkets can be transnational companies for increasing opportunities for economies of scale. They can be distribution centers of the parent companies located in larger cities. Now these retail organizations also have become big chains. That is the big companies are opening their supermarkets in different locations. Uh, maybe they are not owning the property, but they can afford the rental charges and through the convenient location and powerful locations. What are powerful locations? That is sometimes the locations are so powerful that even if you are in that location, you will get a business like the Kanat place of Delhi. It is one of the most powerful locations of the world. So if you are not able to own a shop, these companies lease out the property. The owner gets the advantage of a fixed income and the businessman gets the concept of connecting with the international customers. So the busy locations, the powerful locations definitely offer a kind of a volume of business for which the companies are looking for. So supermarkets have become a part of corporate chains. They work in a systematic way. They give very good and standardized and easy facilities to the customers. What are supermarkets offerings? Supermarkets offering, they offer products at relatively low prices. They have an advantage of large buying power to buy goods from manufacturers at lower prices than the smaller stores can. Now, since these are retail organizations of corporate power, they have an advantage of buying from manufacturers directly. That is, they can ship large orders at lower cost and pass this advantage to the customers. So, this kind of facility can only be made available to the customers from big investors. The big investors can only give you added services and the added advantage of lower margins. They minimize the financing cost by paying for goods at least 30 days after receipt and some extract credit terms of 90 days or more from the vendors. Certain products like bread, milk, sugar, they are like the loss leaders with negative profit margins to attract the shoppers to their store. Now, how do they work? The daily items obviously like the milk, bread and sugar. They are a part of your daily need. That is no customer can live without these basic needs. So, when you have an everyday sale, you want that the customer should come to your store. So, they sell the products below the manufacturing rate that is they are the negative loss leaders and this loss is covered by expensive items. So they try to average the cost they can buy products somewhere round of different cost but then they average it and give the advantage to the customers. So for very small players it is very difficult to offer goods and services at this rate because they when they give these items they are at a loss but they earn because they have other expensive items by which they can earn. How they maintain the profits? Supermarkets make up for the lower margins by high overall volumes of sale with the sale of higher margin items brought by the intended higher volumes of shoppers. Customers do shopping with trolleys by doing sell surface. So they manage the profits because they have higher margins and higher volumes of sale. Since they are offering products at very low cost, the customers buy in bulk. When the customers buy bulk, they consume more. Obviously, price becomes the basic concept to attract the customers. If price is within the parity of the customer and the purchasing power of the customers, the customers will make the product as a part of their lifestyle. Like if juices are available at very low cost or at promotional rate, the customers can buy two packs instead of one. Supermarket. Supermarket chains are attempting 
to further reduce labor cost by shifting to self service check out machines where a single employee can oversee a group of four or five machines at once assisting multiple customers at a time now these machines have become important that you can do your billings through the electronic transactions that is the vending machines you put your money and you get a slip and you get the products which you choose through the machines so machines have uh, become a part and parcel so that the customers can be uh, given service at a faster way now supermarket is basically a concept where you are modifying a departmental store what are the services offered by supermarkets services offered by supermarkets basically they cater to the banking the cafes the child care centers the insurance financial services the mobile phone services the photo processing video rentals pharmacy petrol stations etc so these supermarkets basically are situated in locations where you will get all facilities related to life you will have atm machines you will have uh, offices related to insurance services you will have saloons you will have beauty care you have health centers you have gym everything is available within the nearby locations or within a supermarket supermarkets are typically supplied by the distribution centers of the parent companies they offer products at relatively low prices by using their buying power to buy goods from manufacturers at lower prices than the smaller stores can so they have a competitive advantage of a cost the cost can only be minimized because they buy in large quantities when they buy in large quantities they got quantity discount the bulk discount and even the cash discounts these discounts are transferred as lower prices to the customers to maintain a profit supermarkets make up for the lower margins by a high overall volume of sales with the sale of higher margin items bought by the intended higher volume of shoppers when you come with a promotion and offer goods there is a large number of customers attracted even the big bazaar supermarket offering sabse saste panch din offers huge footfall it is very difficult to go to a big bazaar in those days because the promotions and offers force customers to buy in bulk for a year or for a month they store goods they buy in bulk and they increase their consumption now let's study departmental store a departmental store is a retail establishment offering a wide range of consumer goods in different product categories known as departments so what is a departmental store when we are studying hypermarket and supermarket we have studied the word departmental store departmental store has different categories of product and each category has a department that is if you want medicines you have medicine department that is a pharmacy department you have a grocery department and you have other departments related to merchandise depending upon the activity and the investment now let's study major cities where departmental stores have made a kind of a very good appearance in modern major cities departmental stores have made a dramatic appearance to reshape shopping habits service and luxury similar developments are underway like in london whiteleys paris lee bon marche new york stewards so uh, departmental stores are a part of your life when they are in good locations they attract customers online shopping is not the only way for consumers to survive when you are traveling is you need to see the culture the kind of the products which people are using the ambience the way so most of the shopping which is happening in, in london is through the travelers maybe the local people are not buying but the large number of people who are traveling they buy the goods and services from these stores because they want to carry these services and goods as a part of souvenirs for their near and dear ones The retail departmental store industry consists of companies engaged in the operation of departmental store chains including auxiliary internet and mail order facilities. The industry is limited to departmental store retailers offers a diversified product line. Now for departmental store also it is not the only way to survive. These departmental stores are also supported by internet facilities. that is they will cater to the options of mail order business and internet uh, 
orders that is they will supply you to the home address also but they have option that if the customers are coming to the store they are looking after the customers also. So, you do not have any viable solution in the market that is only by online shopping you can survive or only by departmental store or hypermarket or a supermarket you survive. Markets and stores, the physical stores, they are the lifeblood of any society. The modification, the innovation and the developments of markets reflects the living standards of the people. The living standards of the people basically cultivate a habit of consumption and a habit of educating their life by using good products. It is not only technology, but it is good food habits, healthy eating habits, buying good food concepts in terms of purity, in terms of organic foods also improves the quality of life. So, all the uh, retail options whether it is internet or it is a hypermarket or it is a departmental store helps to change the society in a big way by changing the shopping habits and the consumption habits of the customers. The retail departmental store industry, it is classified in a diversified trading and distributing with store chains concentrated upon a single product line like speciality in appropriate uh, apparel and accessories, computers and electronics. Stores offers a diversified product line at discounted prices is classified as retail discount stores. Now, see the departmental stores also have factory outlets also, the discount stores also, the dollar shops also. So, these shops try to segregate and they filter the products according to the promotion and uh, classify the products according to the price. Uh, there are people who would offer any amount of money to buy the new products and the recent products. And there are there is a class of customers who would wait that when the product would come for a promotion or would come for a discount then they will offer. So, we have first edition for innovators, second edition for mass users and third edition for the legards who would wait for a right price and then only they will buy. So, this is how the market operates and every option of the retail formats connects with the customers and according to their uh, various uh, requirements they offer the products and services. Value created by departmental stores. It is basically impacted by the store factors, the service factors, the merchandise, the technology, price and supply chain. Now, the store format will only be accepted by public life when all the factors fascinate the customers. The store factors in terms of convenience of accessibility that is the location, the ambience and the trust. The service factors is how good you are to the customers what are the services you offer in terms of packaging, delivering and talking and giving a kind of a information and a database to the customers. The merchandise is the variety and the strength of your product assortment. Price is the kind of the promotion and supply chain is from where you source the products and how do you manage the delivery to the customers. So, this is all about the markets which we are studying. Now, let us study the summary of this lecture. In this lecture, we have studied the hypermarket and a supermarket. We have studied the concept and detail, the impact of online and internet technology on these markets. These markets survive in the market because of their convenient locations and their nearby uh, location to the customers. The customers need these stores because to support their daily life, you need a store from where you can connect your life. The physical evidence of the product is important for the customers to feel good. Technology is also impacting and changing these stores. These stores have the options of online connections also, but they are a part and parcel of everybody's life. I hope the students must have understood the concept of hypermarkets and supermarkets. Thank you.